interrupting the current neocoronial corona cricketism to bring you behind the woodshed. That's right, this is Cricketude Busting Episode BTWRLM375. For those of you searching out the broadcast for the content links, which I only speak briefly to, they only give me a place to go, the tabs, the notice we get is called the news, tells us what's going on, we can look way into the future, we can recall the past, from that we can discern what's going on. And remember, instead of bloodshed, bring them behind a woodshed. So this is the very first thing I want to keep going with, bring you into remedies that you find in the black and white, those authorities that sit out there that the people that are officials typically are typically the ones that violate you, that you use the black and white that has no questionable interpretation, the straightforward intent, and you use that to support and create a foundation for your actions. You do that first. You do it better than that. You make a record of that as you move in. I don't know where this ends up all going. I'm hoping I'm part of the solution to get away from the violence. And I also see there's an ignorance in our societies, all of them, around the globe, completely, that's been taken advantage of, that we need to fix in ourselves before we can really start talking about what we need to do because just because we have the right to do it. And I've offered quite a few examples. I've been doing this for a decade, over a decade now. And so this is all about working it out so you don't come into jeopardy. And that message has been going out because, and thank you to my dog Rex. I understand he made a generous donation to the RLM network. Really appreciate that. So keep us going. Really, that's just a mind. Uh, it relaxes the mind a bit, I'm sure, for Grimner that things are just paid for and going. They just they just take care of themselves, and he sits back there, pushing all the little keys to keep everything floating for for me, just to come on, and hook up and talk to you for a couple hours, and that's it. I mean, that's the time I have been able to devote for. Well, I've told you before, the reason why I picked this time slot was that it really fit my schedule because of the other things that I do. And so I can I could dedicate my time to do this. And this is part of I see. As we talk, to, I talk to people in email. That's what you do. You find out what you can do within your demands, your life demands. What can you really commit to and hold to that? Good day, Beetle. Thank you very much. And so this that's all I've, I've that's all a reason why I can come here. It just works out. The help I have to be here, that I'm here to be able to speak to you, is all kind of looked at as a, a long-term thing. If you look back now, and I'm talking into the, into the past here, and I couldn't tell the future, but I relied upon some very solid help, foundation for which I could stand on to make my commitment to be here to talk to you all. And I don't, don't do it, really, you know, may, you may not, may not believe this when I say this. I don't do this to hear myself talk. There's some real serious things happening. They have been. You see them. You're involved with them. And I don't, I've just seen a lot of people do it the wrong way. It may have been what sounded principal up front, but when you start looking at, again, the black and white objective basis, there was a different path that ought to have been taken. Now, we all have our choices to make. And I said taken, not not taken. You have to take a path or else... The highway robbers come along on you and, and get you while you're, wait, you're waiting around. Like we just saw, apparently, in New York, some guy washing his car gets assassinated right on the street. Okay, so we're in that, folks, we're in that time. And uh, so, and, and before I move on about taking care, doing things with a foundation, thank you over at, I think it was Normalization of Ignorance, a post made into the YouTube account there, at Lex Van Man. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, he want he, I say he says this, and this is what I want to point out to you: what this whole thing starts to become. Some of the some in the UK are using Magna Carta, Article 61, to occupy local government buildings lawfully. Anyways, cheers. So the point is, is you identify something in the black and white you believe, and I just I don't say this. You don't do this on just oh that's what it says. That's what I get to do. You really have to do some research around what the system recognizes, what these occupiers we now have occup admit, admit already on record. That's why it's so important. You come together with that, and I'll just accept that Magna Carta Article 61 is sufficient. I'm not so sure if it's occupying, but anyway, that's the way you look at it. That's what your research should have found you are to do or not. You adjust this as you find better, as you understand better. Always adjust. 
but you find a substantial thing in your law, whatever country you are, and you go work through that. You let that be known, and you challenge in the proper, as I say here, differently than just, oh, you put a demand on an official. There's a way to put that demand, and it's really in the assertion that the law exists, and how are they not contrary? And then you, if, if, there, if, there's a car, if there's a discussion to have, but most of the things I want you to do is you to just step in where there's no discussion. And so if that's what you can fi- create a foundation to so-called occupy local government buildings, and that's the limit of what you want to do, well, that's what I'm talking about. You find a foundation to work from. Now, the problem with relying on just that is that there may be a, another opinion out there and it is the power, it's the one that can hurt you, the force that decides that they're not going to listen to that, or they have a contrary view, they make it a question. This is where, again, you have to have the the, the terrain laid out before you went and do, did something. And this is what I'm noticing, people are fall so short. Same thing, we got the evidence of that in the so-called CHOP, CHAZ, whatever the place is now up there in Seattle. But anyway, moving to this, have a foundation, work from it. If the system comes against you, you better know the terrain better than it, than that system does and or be able to make a statement because here's the point even if it's ultimately found wrong by the occupier against you you cannot be found in willful knowledge that it was wrong you at least have a one time out to not get in jeopardy and this is what i've been talking about set the record so you at least have your one out you may not have organization enough to do the second step but you can certainly not get caught without having a word in your mouth, without having a black and white objective basis to rely upon that was valid. Not your opinion of its validity, or what ought to be or it should be, how the occupier has been actually constraining it. You have to stay within that constraint. Now, a lot of people don't like to hear that, but those of you that don't like to hear it are either doing nothing or you're doing it wrong and getting yourself in trouble. And the history is replete with all that. And uh, again, I'll just refer over to Vine. Vine's watched this over time. He's watched how many people have not listened quite right. Good ideas, principled men, and they go down. And it has nothing to do with how principled you are. It's that you're up against a, a, a formidable foe at this point, something that we should have never allowed, and yet we we did. And so here we are. That's the reality. So we have this thing that we're dealing with now, the translation, translation and transition into what we now find is the somewhat in some areas, I'm still waiting for the load of bricks to come out. I'd like to do a, maybe a raised bed gardening and pathways with all the bricks. I, I noticed in some of the pictures that there's nice, some nice pallets. I could use those pallets for quite a few things. Nice pallets, not those big open ones. Nice, lots of wood on these pallets. I could use those from the cops. I'm th- but that doesn't happen around me. I never, I'm never in the right spot for all that good stuff. So, anyway, the, not, I'm not going to take advantage of the stupidity, but. But we have observations that come down that give us an insight. And uh, this one is concurrent with what I've told you. It's in more specific to what they call Antifa. And someone who's historically celebrity son makes a comment about it. And totally within my telling you of what how it works. He wa- he wa- he wants to come and say you don't know. Well, you kind of do know if you listen behind the woodshed about this technique. But he's pointing out that most people don't really know, and I agree partly with that. It has to do with the naming, coming up with names that are counter, and then falling into the position where if you're not, if you, if I claim the ring of nobility or nobility sounding, you you now look bad when I when you say you don't agree, and that's really the technique. But Muhammad Ali's son explains why his dad would have hated racist Black Lives Matter. And we can go through and read it, but he, he goes on to say this. I'm more focused on not these opinions, but still as an opinion of his son. Now, I agree with the wording he uses. It seems to almost sound like his father speaking, at least the way I understand, I remember the words. And remember that Muhammad Ali was also a pacifist. Remember, he went to, he went to jail for not going to Vietnam War, if I remember that correctly. And so this is a, coming from a spirit that was like that, even though he dominated in a, in a sport. That pulverized people because of his capacity. But notwithstanding that, we'll go to today, the politics of what's going on. The techniques used against us is now shown by someone else's observation. And he states uh, this. Excuse me. It's, uh, this is written by a Missy Crane who, I guess, recites Muhammad Ali's son. But uh, going, we'll read this through here a little bit to show you. This is the one of the tricks I've been telling you about. He identifies it. It's not confined to this. 
it's how it gets done. It's one of the earmarks that you can quickly identify who you're dealing with. And then, you, as I told you, there's a methodology of an analysis that you go through to get to the core of where they're at to be able to learn to subvert it. And a lot of times it's simply going to that black and white because these these so-called occupiers, these occupiers, all these movements, they all come in as a alternative dispute resolution processing. And they that's adjunct policy they want you to get to buy into. It's never the law. And so that's, it's really, I figured this out a long time ago, it's really easy to defeat, and it isn't a battle. You just don't engage the insanity. And so when you see the insanity and it stops making sense, then go in there because not to engage it, to analyze it, to come up with the answer, how the, how the insanity is actually corrupting the thing they are, they are targeting, which even the people involved don't even really understand, actually. And this is the other, you, see, you watch, you take a call of sheep and stuff. No, this is mind control acting out and it shows that you're immature as a people and when you don't respond it's an immaturity as well so just because you watch antifa acting out you think you're not part of that acting out no because there's another attack that you're you're acting out in silence the silence is your silence in any way observed in the occupier is a consent and can be it can even happen when you talk but talking correctly what i'm trying to caution people against Make sure you know the terrain and you're talking to it. And you don't have to talk a lot to it. You just have to talk specific. And, uh, okay, I'll, I won't go up. There's so many examples. But Muhammad Ali's son explains why his dad would have hated the racist Black Lives Matter. Well, this is not even hard to under, figure out. I'm not going to get to too much analysis. Because it's an operation, it's an op, it's a psyop, it's a, con, it's a mission of destruction. Of course, this is not going to be what it is. So that part's not even hard. But he, he lets us into a little bit of of a clue of the trick, and we'll read it on here now. There is a little marketing trick, marketing trick, if you don't think everything's economic and promotion, marketing trick that left the left does that some people still haven't caught on to. They name their most radical and divisive movements the names of that make them sound reasonable and heroic. Okay, that's that warm and fuzzy, correct? So this is up right up front, he's telling you, Something you can see for yourself. If you haven't noticed, this is what they do. This is what all this method does. It doesn't matter how outwardly riotous they are. They're doing it, and it's already done and settled. And I say, watch out. Inside your government, it's already established this very same thing. It's how I was able to identify and then us focus on the battlefield and the battle at hand relative to our 2013 lawsuit. That's how I was, I'm able to identify leverage funding schemes. And now they're they're moving that into an even a different complication. You can just watch the mo the amoeba moving through the parasitic amoeba, the creature that's out there eating away at your way of life. But anyway, so they uh, make the warm and fuzzy, this heroic sounding things. Uh, they address the they make find the words that actually tug at your heartstrings, if you will, and why not engage? And, and then they say Antifa stands for anti-fascist. How can you not support a group that literally is called anti-fascists? If you don't support them, you must support fascism. In reality, Antifa is a vicious, hateful, violent group of commie anarchists who hate everything America stands for. They're right. They're not fascists. They're communists. Now, a lot of people will say, uh, hear the anarchists screaming and yelling and all this, and I, I don't get into the names. I don't get into the ists or the isms. That's for a whole bunch of other people to, to do if they want to waste their time. Uh, I went through and I showed you technically the way there's a, you know, again, the multiple definitions. There's very few words with only one definition is what they got us. They got us by the throat by this. So you can go ahead and argue to, to your blue in the face or blue line in the face or pink in the face or rainbow in the face. It doesn't matter that they're using this, this condition in order to keep you captured into the problem. Uh, where I read and I told you technically... The way the political anarchy is defined is communism. And so those of you that are anarchists of the new definition will not agree with that. You will just completely shut down and have an argument with me. I could care less about it all. The point is, it doesn't matter what you tie into. If you're not responding to you, the, the, the actual enemy destroying your lives, it doesn't matter what you call anything. It really doesn't. Your life is going to be run down. At some point, they finally get at you and to you. 
At any rate, so anarchists uh, who hate uh, everything in America is what these anti-fascists. Yeah, we can see that, but they're do they really do that? They're just acting out. They're immature people. I don't even give them that much credit either. They're dangerous. They'll hurt you. It's like some some teenage boy decides he's got it right. How many times do we hear about any more that the teenage boys kill their family? Yeah, they're dangerous. They're big and they're dangerous because they're not. They have no sense in them. And at any rate, so. How, how do you get, so he goes on to reading here, how do you get most of your news? By completing a poll you receive in the, uh, receive in the email uh, that you agreed to privacy, but it allows the media, you respond to these polls, and it allows the media and the Dems to provide the cover for them. Well, they're anti-fascists, they're fa fighting racism. Don't you hate racism? And so, again, this is a tactic, it's a technique. You can't even engage it. I guess this is what I've been telling you. You have to focus on what you need to get done that actually protects you. If you haven't, you really don't think through what I'm saying. There's some self-evident truths that happen when you get into doing something and you focus. You don't let all this noise interfere. You stay that narrow path. And, okay, Grimner, they are not act anarchists, how they are opposite of anarchists. Okay, that's the point. It doesn't matter. Uh, I've, told, I've explained there's a technical definition for anarchy, which means communism. That statement in this article would be correct. I'm not going to get into what these ists and isms are. What you have is those are used to divide our thoughts. It puts you different from someone else. What you have is an invasion going on that's secret to you and or invisible the effects of which are what you're seeing in the news to also respond to, to keep you di divided. My view is, you see that as evidence of the invasion. All the you see, it's When your bomb goes off, you see bright light and stuff and dirt and smoke. Okay, who dropped the bomb? Who set the bomb? This is the stuff you start having to, that was just evidence to know, okay, somebody did something. Who was it? Who's the criminal? It doesn't matter my view, anybody's view on whether on that. It's whether or not that one is trying to take me out, certainly not lawfully, and certainly not peacefully, which is really the law, and certainly not with any kind of a cooperation with a, a communal, if you will, a societal view on how things are supposed to happen. And you're getting back to this, Black Lives Matter is the same thing. How on earth can you disagree with the term Black Lives Matter and not look like a jerk? If you don't support BLM, you must hate black people, right? When in reality, the BLM has been created operated and funded by some communist whites who started Antifa. Okay, so I don't know about communists. They're criminals who are using a weapon against you. These are just no different to me than armies, war, warriors uh, in a group that doesn't like your way of life. And so this is my view. I don't care what you put the title on. It, it, you're looking at what the people uh, that are doing do, what their effects, who's paying their salary. Who, you know, we call it salary just as a coin of phrase. Who is, who is actually behind what's going on and what's their purpose? And that's not hard to see. I, I mean, I don't have a problem with it, but I don't engage it too much. You've heard me not talk about lots of things. I don't get into the political dialogue too much. Although if you listen loosely, maybe you think I do. I'm looking at ways to to see what the effect of what's going on and then tracking that back with an, a view, a belief, a conviction that this country has been under attack for a very, very long time by multiple actors. And we have a big work ahead of us and we can't be getting into any divisive words, nine titles or anything, anything. In fact, I tell you, get into language because that separates you out, as I've told you before, over and over. Maybe people don't apply, they really don't listen to what I'm saying about how powerful it is as a being in a minor, a mineral state grantee, finding the federal agencies and the state agencies attacking us. No one up until the time I started, I started looking at it, understood what was going on. But when I looked at the problem and found out, as I've told you before many, many times, anything you have, even your statuses that's mischaracterized, is another one of these put a name on it. That you have to get to the core of that, and the way I found out you best do that is to, when you find your actual status that's been mischaracterized, then you use the language that gave you the proper characterization, and the one that mischaracterized you cannot defame you anymore. 
They can't even use that language. And by that, you move and separate yourself from a trespasser, an enemy, a soldier, an agent, or whatever. And so I'm getting a little... I'm getting into the more the technical part of this. I don't know if you've never heard me before or barely listen or whatever. You're not going to pick up what I'm saying. My mind just starts to scream at me a little bit. I get too technical because I haven't seen the reflection of all the stuff I've said already in people really in any numbers but doing the things that appears that need to be done in the face of the failure of every bit of what has been done. But this gentleman, the son, I don't, in fact, I, I disregard his name. I didn't mean to insult him. I don't know, it's uh, someone talking about Muhammad Ali's son, and so I apologize for not having the name. It's not in the article yet. Again, I'm not looking at, this is just an evidence of how they're doing it to you, and this is not the only thing. Any anyway, rate, going on here, uh, the groups are named in, the, in order uh, to box critics into a corner. And so I've I've explained about this condition where you don't engage them, and then they can't box you. Even box, hey, that's a pun, I guess, with Muhammad Ali here. Box you in the corner, rope a dope. You don't even get involved. You don't even get in the in the arena. You go, as I was cautioning, and we'll get to the quick story here about maybe correcting. You don't just jump into an area to think, oh, America's great. We got freedoms, and we're going to go protect. We're going to kick out those people that stop stop the United States from supposedly being a, a free United States zone, and you're going to go as as some group and gang to go throw them out and make America great again. That, that's not how. That, that's not how it works. It's not going to work. It, it sounds cool. sounds macho, like I said last week, but it's not really where we need to go first. It's not how we address what we're watching because it's all, like he says again here, thankfully many people are seeing past this little marketing trick. It's all a promotion. You don't engage the promotion. It's vapor. Don't engage it. And you're just swinging at the breeze as, as well. So he acknowledges here that, we're seeing it. What I my problem with you may be seeing it. You're not responding to it, and the things you think are responses aren't proper. And I think I have again looking through and qualifying what I'm telling you. When I say I think, I'm actually convicted in the process that I've found that I have not heard anybody overturn or find fault with yet, and partly because no one engages it. But that would what I'm suggesting answers to the problems much more efficiently and much more efficaciously than, well, doing nothing or doing it wrong or thinking wrong or thinking that what you did was better than because of what you thought ought to be. This is not working that directly either. Going on the story, and I think I've chopped this up way too much, but anyway, that's exactly what Muhammad Ali's son is saying. This author now says he doesn't like BLM. He thinks it's a racist and hateful group, and he says his father would have felt the same exact way. My point about this is not going into the conjecture of what his father would think. I would agree in generalities. His son has an insight. He also has probably a sense because he lived with him for a while, certainly would know. But that's not what I'm here to tell you about engaging Muhammad Ali, his son, or what Muhammad Ali actually says more than identifying the trick, the setup for the takedown. And again, in line with confirming what I've been telling you, how not to engage it, how not to even argue with it, it's it's insanity, how to move to where you, if you, again, if you've got this republic, if you can keep it, idea, which is they're trying to destroy, I have now understood what the republic, if you can keep it, meant relative to land law, because it's us having the land, that the people having the land that actually are the power here. Most of you don't recognize that, and you won't go maybe run down, because I haven't had anybody respond to me, when you find the statutes that say a judge cannot interpret, uh, cannot engage a lawsuit relative to a patent that you have a land, uh, ev- the patent is your evidence to the land you have, that there's your sovereignty. Within the well, we're talking within the four corners of your document relative to what you have been granted, that's forbidden to any government agent to interfere with. There's your sovereignty, and from that is your pertinent rights, as I've been talking. And so if you don't lay it down exactly where you are and then look from that the obligations of government because of that sovereignty that in there, and I don't mean you're a sovereign, stop all the sovereign citizens and, and you're a sovereign like a king. We're talking relative to a piece of land and the jurisdiction and authority relative to a government to intrude, to identify how you're essentially within the four corners of that document 
within the grant to the land, you're with you're a sovereign to the extent that, as we see in the mining law, exclusive possession, enjoyment, and enjoyment. Okay, so that means against the whole world, including including the governments. Now it's not uncon it's not a wanton disregard of other people or things, and that's where the little bit of the inroads would be. But uh, if you know what you if you're staying within within the guide, guidelines and of uh, the four corners of the grants or the patent, which is evidence, it's not it's the evidence of the fulfillment of a grant. You understand these hierarchies and use that language. There's no one that can come against you without being, especially in official capacity, a felon, multiple felons. So I don't know why this is really so hard to understand. You do have to lock down what you got, how you got it, and the parameters of it. That has to be done. You have to educate yourself to your own possession. It, when you don't, th then you start going off willy-nilly. When you find out that there's no one involved with your possession private to you, all this becomes an intrusion, and the failure to protect you against it becomes a, a breach, a dereliction of duty. Your words start to change completely in how you address this. The foundation you create is completely different. And I'll tell you, there's just no, not even the attorneys are trained in this. And if you want to find out how what attorneys are trained on, go to their continuing education sec sections in the internet and or their websites or their bar associations. This is how I figured out that mining, so-called mining lawyers, uh, mining attorneys for mining law, didn't know what they were talking about. Their continuing learning education was strict, strictly limited to administrative procedures. Your grant, for those of you that have a, understand this, and your patent is not, it, submits, it can't be submitted to an administrative procedure. In fact, if you find the, the statutes for the judiciary can't touch these things. And so when you start organizing all this up and don't allow someone to defame your status or your possessions by making new names that sound warm and fuzzy like we need to use them, well, they are. They're using them as a club to beat you in the head with like a baby seal. And you, you sat there in bed, stayed to be the baby seal instead of standing up and saying, wait a minute, I'm not, even an, I'm not even an animal. I'm a man or a woman. You don't have a right to do any of this. And I told you that before you got here. It's a whole different condition. So we are hearing from Muhammad Ali's son, how he views the setup for the takedown, the trick, consistent with what I've been telling you on something specific. Now we see how the insanity starts to happen. We start responding to this insanity as if, if we respond to it, we've answered it. It's totally wrong. All it is is identifying how a ridiculous the whole thing is and how you need to just step up and stop it, not by going into the streets, as I told you, but by turning back around and showing the dare election to maintain certain things the way they were. And I told you, as we see in the Virginia Second Amendment so-called issue, when the government is, a maladministr is in maladministration, the people can change that. If you really un get, stop giving lip service to all this foundational law, where the, they say the people are the sovereign, well, why aren't you acting it? Why aren't you functioning, engaging as if you are? But here we have another, as we move this thing, it certainly cannot be what it is, as we see Muhammad Ali's son describing what he thinks his father would say. Uh, woke mobs now destroying statues of leading anti-slavery figures. So if you thought this was about anti-slavery now expanded from what started out to be br police brutality, which is really just an excuse. It's, again, remember what I've told you. These are stalking horse issues. Okay, the, the stakeholders are behind the stocking horse here. And the stakeholders aren't the people that are interested. And they change the dialogue as they need it. The woke mobs now destroying statues of leading anti-slavery figures. So this has expanded the idea from police brutality. And what I've been telling you how to stop it for years, you have to engage this thing, even with the occupier, at least even on a policy level, to start the process. Most people don't. Everybody, actually, most people don't. Everybody doesn't. They ought to, because what's happened when we fail to do that, they've allowed a foothold to do this stuff, where we now find out the people that are rioting don't even follow. They have no clue, really, of any so-called value. The value is the destruction of your way of life, period. That's the only thing, but it's not their value. They're just a, a horde moving around a mob, destroying stuff. They're even destroying what you thought they were after, anti-slavery. Police in various American cities, especially the East and West Coast, have stood down while fanatical mobs of leftists, leftists unilaterally determined with 
which public monuments and statutes could be toppled, destroyed, and in some cases beheaded, as in the recent beheading of Christopher Columbus statue in the public park in Boston. Now, there's been all kinds of, it started, I told you, it started when we saw those things coming out of the South, it was uh, the Confederate view was being denounced. Let me remind you, this whole thing has nothing to do with, anymore, it never did really, with police brutality. It has nothing to do with slavery. It has nothing on now, as you see, with anti-slavery. It has to do with removing every, every, good or bad, remembrance of the past. It's to strip you from any public acknowledgement, good or bad, of the past. And you see it right here in this story. Leading anti-slavery figures are gotten toppled. They want to take the evidence of your history away, good or bad. Why do you want what you might consider bad presented if it's understood in the culture as a remembrance? Don't go there. Is being removed. Good. If you thought anti-slavery was something that happened in the Civil War, if you thought that was a, a symbol of that, it's gone too. Why? Because they don't want you to have a culture. These they, the ones behind all this, the ones foot in the bill, the globalists, if you will, the internationalists, and more, all these names and all these isms and ists that are running the, pro pro the, the op behind this, they don't want you to have any history because they're going to be in the position to tell you what, how to think and, and you'll have no reference to think otherwise. And so... What they also, and this was done in the 90s, I understood, used to come out, and I don't remember, haven't seen too much lately. You, the art that would be presented in the public squares would be an amorphous, non-intelligible type of so-called natural art. It became all these blobs that showed up in the public squares for a long while. I don't know if they're still doing that. You, what the heck's that mean? It really meant nothing. It was just what they replaced what you would see. It meant nothing whatsoever except the remembrance that the people that put it there were ecologically and naturally, they were, they were nature lovers, if you will. They were promoters of, of the, the women, children, and the indigenous. And I've already told you, what, what about the men? <laughs> see, it's not in there. Why? Because this is a religion who, that promotes the feminine in imbalance, if you will, if we go that side. So they want anti-slavery figures being destroyed is proof they're just destroying every remembrance of history for you. Your little ones growing up will never, ever see a statue that you could guide them and say, you know, that guy did this. And if you were anti-slavery, he was a slaver. That guy did this, and we have him there so that you'll never forget. Let's not do that ever again. But that is going to be gone. No, now you're going to walk up to some so-called artistic blob, and you get to talk about how the people that put them there put them there for your sake, for your good spirits in mind, because they're 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 guiding your your society so well. Anyway, moving on. This is what this is. We're seeing the news telling you exactly what was been talked about for decades now. That no one has stopped. But I told you, we have every opportunity right now to stop. Whether it's with the identification of the fraud of so-called Black Lives Matter, or more importantly here, because it gives you a direct right to COVID-19. Now, there was something that put up that this researcher predicted 2020 would be mayhem. But here's what he says may come next. It's another inducement. Uh, again, somebody figured out supposedly through historic models, which I looked at a little bit. I don't want to get too critical of this because it's not what I'm here to talk about today. Well, I don't want to be criticizing. It's just another indication. There was prior knowledge that things would be coming and that to me that looks like it's planned he's like an insider to do that because the the analysis that he did the historical cycles didn't seem to be enough to be able to come up with some meaningful numbers however you can see trendings you can see things going on yes i you can get an intuitional sense he calls it it was science he predicts that we were going to have a problem a pandemic uh, comes on because of the dynamic. He explains the dynamic, and I think that's the most important thing to read in this article, because that's how you're being led by the nose. You've been being led by the nose on these very same things. And what I offer is a way to start again. You start if you have a ring in your nose, you cut the leash. Hopefully, you pull the ring out. 
and then you and you take a step back and relook at what the condition is so you can stop the people that have been dragging that drag you and everybody else along again when you do for you and those similarly situated you then have a power that's beyond you and i will get to the point of equity we're going to find a little bit of an equity you find out it's really not in the determination of the law the black and white necessarily but when you bring a right that's not a question like I've told you, that when you find a judge that cannot find against your evidence at all, like in a patent, they can't rule against you as long as you're within. All they will look at is whether or not your claim is within the four corners of your right, if you will, the, the authority that you're choosing to bring. So we can see people can look forward. And uh, this Turchin, Peter Turchin dude, he figures out that uh, it would be widespread civil unrest. And now he's feeling, uh, you know, pretty horrified about what he came on to for 2020 when he predicted it. But at any rate, it's, again, some, you can look into the future. There's no excuse. There's been numerous ways to look at this. I don't put too much stock into some of these things because he's also not an oracle, which he tries to deny by saying science. Remember, scientism has driven us here as well. All this so-called science is what got us here and what they do is statistics instead of facts because it's really risk management instead of hazard um, hazard uh, mitigation it's risk management not hazard mitigation it's looking trying to find ways to keep everything from happening wrong before it happens instead of understanding how to fight the fire when you got the fire so here's as we go on things continue to make more sense uh, more nonsense and it it's and why you just uh, out it for that and why you wouldn't want to engage it uh, raz simone Hold hands out firearms in Chaz C H A Z. That was that what Capitol Hill autonomous zone that was supposed to be all the Antifa. We're going to make life. It's a USA free zone. Now they're handing out guns. It's the same people that would deny you a gun. Okay, it makes no sense, right? Immediately they find out that they're going to hand out guns. Well, is it that they are doing that themselves, or is this a, as it's asked on uh, Crypticon.com? Is this a COINTEL program top to bottom? Well, whether you call it COINTEL or not, I'm saying yes, it's a plan, and they're executing it. You can get involved with all the isms and the is and all the, all the stupidity and the insanity and how they move the goalposts around, or you can go get out of the game, get out of the field, get out of the stadium, and start dealing with it as a property owner that has no rights whatsoever, and that there were some people that were there that were supposed to be in a Republican form government situated to do, not be derelict, and as you find them derelict, you start ex, uh, exercising the rights of the posterity uh, in order to remove and replace what slowly incremented itself in to destroy your 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 way of life. So, COINTEL program, to me, that's just like an ISM or an IST. It doesn't matter. It's what's going on. Are you going to stop it? First of all, they're handing out firearms. This is the same group of people. All the people that support this then don't agree that, that the guns are, are bad. Whoever, the Democrat, whoever you, liberals, whatever, progressives, it doesn't matter. As soon as they needed to, needed to go to guns, they went there because that's not an issue. See, it's just a, it's just a stalking horse, the, the gun issue. Your response to that is how. You engage it, you're going to lose. You engage what they're after to stop how they're going to take it out because there's no right to do so or it's crime to do so. You're going to start getting a little bit more traction on the ground. And I'm going to now address something I talked about last week under a story that said the bikers uh, for Trump uh, were going to go and invade with the truckers and everybody else and the biker kings going in. They were going to go in and, and kick out those people in Seattle. Now, Bikers for Trump says they are not going to Seattle and CHAS. I, I, now that I see that, I'm going to correct my record as to the intent. I don't know if that's a smoke screen either, but that's right. Don't go in and engage it. Again, Bikers for Trump, that's a problem for me. You can't support either party or either anyone in the offices that's allowing this destruction to happen. And how do I say allowing? Because I've told you for years how it should stop. And how the people in seat to decision have the power to stop it. So this, the bikers for Trump going into Seattle sounds like it was a, a promotion of the liberals, if you will, to incite a, a, a condition which probably gave them the so-called excuse, the plausible, deniable excuse that they needed to protect themselves in the handing out of guns. The very thing that they would tell you, you can't have. And so what was the object? They don't want you to have guns. But they'll resort to them at a moment, in a split moment. 
they'll resort to them. And that's why you need to have your guns. But that's not what you need to rely on first. You need to be able to step up and be understand where you failed in your responsibility to be an informed and vigilant populace and how to engage. And I hope, well, like I said, I just have a, the only question I have is no one explains where I've failed. What I provide you here in the last decade were methods and methodologies on regaining that without violence and jeopardy. And the more of you I was really hoping would come together and see that you get excited because it does start to work, that we would just start to see this pushback. And we would have headed this thing off, but apparently we're that stubborn. It's going to get worse. And my thought is, my concern is, it's going to slip away because then no one's practiced enough to understand how to get to the core of the issue too, very quickly, and they get lost over time by whatever, whatever. I mean, it's so many, so many entertaining things to do, so much theater out there to engage. It's not fun, and it's not happy time uh, to do what I'm saying. It's, it's not. I don't know what, and I don't, I agree that you would see that, but that's not an excuse. We literally are being led around by the nose as a society. And led into the water. Uh, you, they don't care if you're going to drink the water as a horse. But they're leading you. They're going to drown you. And they'll do it by any warm and fuzzy. As Muhammad Ali's son said. If you didn't hear the trick from me. You just heard it from him. That's the technique. And you got to get through that. And look past it. It doesn't matter who is actually causing the fomentation. It's your obligation to stop it. However monstrous, however beast-like the operation is behind it. The bigger it is, probably the more people it's going to take. I look at this Bikers for Trump and all these, everybody, like I said, the Oath Keepers, the Three Percenters, all the people that are in massive groups, I wish they had, if they applied even 10% of what I tell you here behind the woodshed, would probably start already start to change things. And the problem I see with when they don't, then they're run by people that are, if you will, the the the, the subversives. They're the ones, the so-called leaders. There's not even free thought inside a group. Now, if this was an attack by the progressives against the bikers for Trump, which I would say there was, that needed to come out, which the denial starts to say, but then they needed to have a plan. Again, look forward. Have a plan against how this works in a proper way so that you feel whatever might come against you that you didn't understand. Like when they went to guns, and Chaz, I understand now, they've had their first killing. And the not looking, playing 5D chess as they're not, they didn't realize when you say USA stays out there, and we're closing, this is a USA free zone, when you go ask for the benefit like an EMT in the United States, Maybe they won't show up after you shoot one of yourselves. All right? So this is like, you see, people don't know how to play 5D at all. Someone's playing them. Now, again, a bunch of whiners, as far as I can tell. If they're really going to do it, and this is why I don't like anybody to go on and do this kind of stuff, like try and take over things that way, is because you get pigeonholed in this, in this way. And I say that when... I see other things that can be done, and I've been on record on how I didn't agree with things in the news were being run by stake, uh, the stocking, uh, stakeholders running stocking horses against people with principle who were getting harms, but maybe not, and being led to, down the primrose path of what those harms might be, and totally oblivious of what they ought to have really been doing more foundationally. Like I said, you people in the UK, you've on the Magna Carta, if that's good enough to give you a plausible reliance on the law, Perfect. That's what you start with. But I wouldn't leave it there. I'd be going on looking on and on. Like I tell you, you can go. When you find, again, when you find the government gone bad, it's almost endless to find how they're bad. And so you should have all that in your in your repertoire, if you will. When they try to defeat one thing, you have another thing that comes. And better yet, you start doing the very thing that you see this insanity. Not only are they after slavery statutes, they're after anti-slavery statutes. You catch the government doing that. That's the fun part. And we're starting to do that here with this Fauci. <laughs> Remember, Fauci means to fall prey to. And so this is what the government, the nation has done. And then we see this jumping on both sides of the fence, right? It's all the same method. So that's how I know it's all part of the same thing. It may not be the same 
subject matter, but it's all the same type of process. Fauci, why the public wasn't told to wear masks when the coronavirus pandemic began. Why do they be reporting on this? Because they want to tell you now that medical masks are important. So before, it's like the anti-slavery, uh, the slavery, they wanted to get rid of the evidence of that. Now they're getting rid of anti-slavery. Now it's don't wear masks, and here's why, but now you have to wear masks. Okay, they change changing the goalposts the whole entire time. Do I even have to concern myself with that if I hit this thing directly with the with the failure of the ability to identify an infectious agent? Isn't that fact of that irrele- make the mask discussion irrelevant? And this is what I want to move on to something here because of what I've seen. Seeing, I was sent a link and uh, more people are promoting this. And the problem is, as I've told you, the information is 100% correct, but it's 100% inapplicable to what you have to do. So here we see the same thing going on with Fauci. Oh, don't wear the mask. And we didn't want the the EMTs, because we were running out of masks, we didn't want them to think that they had to have a mask, putting them all at risk. And now you have to have a mask. Now, I've told you, I've been on record way early about the mask problem relative to what? Nothing. No provable thing. Yet, there's a flu out there every year, and you're in diminished state for the most part. We're having more information about that about what your your better healthy state would be to stop all the problem. We had that in our hands. Would have exposed a whole lot more of the fraud. If we want people want to call this a hoax, it's a fraud. And it's a fraud to change your way of life. One day one day it's no mask, now it's mass. So here this is what this story is trying to do. Why the public wasn't told. They try to give you a reason why you weren't told, plausible deniability, and while they're promoting to wear the mask. Why? Because they've also promoted that there's going to be a second wave. Second wave for something they can't test about. I don't know how about how many fairy tales you all want to listen to and even deny by not action, but these people are committing, I can't see anything less than sedition, if not treason. And we're a society that was supposed to keep that republic. And yet, so here we are. So I, I want to give, I could read again, they keep talking about the corona pandemic, coronavirus pandemic. Again, there is no test. What's he talking about? So, they talk about the mask. Now you're not supposed to wear it. You weren't supposed to wear it. What that was, he says, they were protecting the, the uh, EMTs. How come the EMTs didn't go down then in mass for not wearing the masks? Is what I don't understand no one talks about in this stupidity. But anyway, it doesn't matter, does it? Because you haven't said there's a, any real thing out there. And when you can't identify it, I don't know what to look for either. I can't even help. At least when I got an invader coming in, I can go find where they're coming in and stop them. I can know what to look for. But this is the whole story about this. It's a name put on something that makes you fearful, that gives you, you give the, whoever's moving it an authority. And if you deny that, then you get blamed for bringing on exactly what they made up. Well, shame on you. No one's figured this thing out, just like his Muhammad, Muhammad, Muhammad Ali's son is saying. But it's not that big a trick. I've been talking about it for uh, about 11 or so years I've been broadcasting, and I was type, uh, writing articles about it prior to that. Again, this stuff comes out of the 90s, okay, for me. So we, let's move over to one little thing. And I just seeded the problem that the mask, when you have go after the no test thing and the fact that there are no no government certified, no public health authority certified to an infectious agent, which is the core of what they had to do, certified to that by a test. When they didn't do that, they have nothing to substantiate themselves on. Therefore, the imposition of mask is really irrelevant, but that's no, another harm. Now, we want to see about that, even if I agree. So I've already said, now, I'm not in the primary position. I'm going to go move in the alternative. If you disagree that the, there's no test was okay, if you disagree that they didn't have to certify, if you, despite what the black and white said, or disagree with the Constitution that says you can only go so far or for so long, even if you disagree with all that, now we might get to the point of where masks are, are important. Or not. Whatever. I'm just talking in the concept of a mask. So let's get to that. I want you to understand but you, again, you can be 100% right on your information, but completely 100% inapplicable to solving a particular problem. And that's what I'm going to, where I'm going to place this next video. For as much as I don't know the woman named Peggy Hall, I've, I've sent an email. She didn't respond. 
when people don't respond to me, uh, they go down a little bit a notch on my my level of uh, effectuality and or earnest, even though she's earnest, because she actually becomes focused and obsessive on one thing that's important but in its place. So it's important to understand these masks, first of all, for you, because of what they might be doing if you believe in them. And, you, and I've said you can use them. There's certain conditions where you actually should use them, at least to kind of limit a quick exposure if it's there. If it's there. I mean, I use masks usually during the springtime anyway for, for allergies. I've, been, I've used them a lot less in the last few years. I guess I'm doing something better. But it used to be I had to wear a mask all the time, whatever the cost was. I also found my lips sucking onto the front end of the, the mask because I couldn't breathe so well after a while. Well, this is an indication about why. And I, so OSHA, so Peggy Hall makes a video, I passed around. I, I have no problem with the information. What I have problem is when you use it. You use it for you immediately, but for what I want people to get to it, in the habeas to apply it, you're not addressing the mask. That becomes a secondary discussion in the alternative to anticipate the position. Anticipate how they're going to derail your matter and you're going to try and have to dis disguise it back, discuss it later when they try to devoid, devolve into something that's not relevant. And as I get this chat room uh, thing here quick from Vine, Mafood from Algeria. Thank you. Thank you. Well, all the way across the world. One small world, isn't it? And I won't sing the song. Don't do that to me. Thank you. And I hope I have to talk to us in the United States of America. I hope the principles are generalities across the world and look local to your own condition. You have to out, if you out the, the problem and you have the ability without losing your head to do so, and I hope I didn't, hope I don't prejudice my thought about how you, your life is there. Make sure that you can do that, but you attack the core of the failure of the test. Not because of your opinion, because the CDC says so and the FDA agreed. The test for a virus, an infectious agent, not the name, not the Black Lives Matter, Matter title, not COVID-19, the title, not SARS, the title, but the actual actor, they have to prove that underneath the, the medical thing, underneath the medical emergencies. But uh, Peggy Hall brings up a thing about masks. I want to get right to it. OSHA says masks don't work and violate OSHA oxygen levels. You need to see this. She needed to see her findings. Hunter looks perp. I would listen. I won't take any of what she says just because she said it. I'd go and get all the documents she says. I'd, and then I'd sit back and I'd think about how they would actually integrate. It may equal to what she's found. And I would just for the moment say she's done her she's done her homework on the masks. She actually has a video. Someone has a oxygen meter. If I get this right, but my memory this is almost the beginning of last week. That shows when you put the mask on. Within seconds, the oxygen in the mask area depletes very quickly. Down below what the EPA, I think it was, or OSHA says, is healthy. So you're, you're, you have a volume of air that's below what it's supposed to be. I equated that to you don't want to, and they tell you in airplanes, don't fly over 12,500 feet because the oxygen level is reduced to the point it starts to affect you, your, your capacity, your brain. And so this is essentially what I thought was a similar thing. Uh, the, she points out to OSHA says the masks don't work. She points out all these neat things. I want to put this in context. If she's 100%, I would say, she, given that she's 100% correct here, it's still not the argument you want to lead with or you want to argue with first. That This point comes in the alternative. When, where, where, and when you have been beat down and back, you now have a back position because the authority you're looking at is just a completely, just a criminal. They're not recognizing any of the, their elections of duty. You've got another cause now and the evidence on record, which is the important thing. Now you get back to where what? What I've told you all the attorneys and all the court cases do, they argue the, that the, they do not argue that the orders are lawful. They just accept them. And then they bring themselves into compliance with those laws. Is this argument? If you're, you say you agree, you have to agree here that those orders are lawful. You've already lost your game, essentially, is what I can tell, because now you've brought it into the, into the, the, the discussion and the, the power of the agency to decide. Now you've got to do the administrative side thing, where you argue that the order to do certain things 
actually violates the law. That's the alternative argument once you've tried to destroy the fact they have no test. Then you move back to position two and say, even if I agree that you have a lawful order, this part of what you're requiring people to do is actually deadly. And she'll tell you that's what's interesting. It's an immediately deadly thing that goes on when you have less than 19.5% oxygen. I found that 19.5 pretty interesting because there's a, a dial, um, geometric div division on the Earth at 19.5 latitudes that is kind of cool. But at any rate, don't get too lost. Here is a proof in the alternative. So those of you that have been looking at this, and if you're in that close to do this, you bring this in the alternative. Even if I agreed that your order was lawful, what you're asking of me to do is either not supported, or in this case, it's actually potentially deadly. And she lays it out for you. So I don't want to, I'm not dismissing Peggy Hall's contribution. I'm saying, I mean, I hope and I wish she would step up to bring up the idea, champion the fact that there's no test, there's no way to have certified in the states. Some of you are doing that research and finding that out and confirming what I've told you months and months ago. And then you say in the alternative, even if I agreed, what you're offering to do is kill people, me particularly, and those similarly situated. So I think enough there. I want, I want to give you that link so you can read what she, she says. I appreciate her energy. And I appreciate her findings. She's one of those ladies you want on your side. What I want you to understand is, again, it's the idea. And this took a long time for me to figure out. You can be 100% right, but be 100% irrelevant to what you end up having to need to do to, to do anything, essentially. And that's not going to help us. It's like I say, you have to respond properly. You can respond like crazy. If it's all doing the wrong thing, it's against what you need to have done. Obviously, self-evidently, you're not going to get done what you, what you want to do. And look at all the energy you've expended. Now, so we move on. As this thing goes on, and life-saving coronavirus drug, major breakthrough. Well, obviously, what did they mean breakthrough on coronavirus? Did they identify one? What test, folks? This is so critical to understand. You can just eliminate all this stuff from the beginning. What was really weird about this story, and I'm wondering if I even understand this correctly. They're saying this thing is a finding of the steroid, low-dose steroid treatment, dexamethasone. Why can't I say this stuff? I used to be able to say it. I'm near near the end, I think. Dexamethaonase. Theonose? At any rate, theosone. I'll get it. Can't read letters anymore. Anyway, you go find You get the article, read it, laugh at me, whatever. It doesn't matter. I want you to focus on something else, not how I stutter, how I can't get it anymore. Look at the information they're telling you. They're saying that this thing is the from the biggest trial existing to for treatments on the coronavirus, which they, the deadly virus now, they're identified. The de they have a can I, no test, folks, but they're saying the deadly virus, the common cold virus, apparently. They have this treatment. Not a cure, obviously, but a treatment. And here's what it does. It can cut the risk of death by a third for patients on ventilators. For those on oxygen, it cuts death by a fifth. And this is the big cure treatment. One third, that means two people are dying for every one that might be saved if you're on a ventilator, which we heard by the other doctor is done and made up. They put you in that state to get you there because it's a big bucks. On the other, if you just give the pump bottle or oxygen, you're saving what? 20% of the people, one in five. How is this the promoted panacea? So I, I thought I was confused. How could this be such a thing? I went down, I'm looking, am I misunderstanding this? But no, if you read farther down, it says about 19 out of 20 patients with coronavirus recover without being admitted to the hospital. Of those who are admitted, most also recover, but some need oxygen or me mechanical ventilation. Wow, it doesn't sound like much of a problem here. What this explains is that the numbers they said before in statement by the numbers is exactly what they're saying. Maybe one out of three people on ventilators is saved, 
Not all of them, just one, or one out of five. And so here we have again. It's a treatment that really isn't effective that they're promoting. On something they can't even test for and have no test, not because of my opinion, because the CDC says there is no test. Remember, antibodies is not identifying the cause of the antibodies. There's also something about that story, if I remember right, that you're testing for COVID, which is flu symptoms. But this thing responds to that. And so what, what are they actually doing? They're not testing. They're not solving the problem. They just have something that some people respond to. And in fact, they're not looking. They're, it's a pharmaceutical, pharma harma answer instead of what you ought to have been doing, which also is coming out. And I got this came out this morning, and so Sound Minds, if you run in the, this live, you you don't have this 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 link. Don't go looking for it. Well, you could go look for it, but a death from COVID-19 strongly associated with low vitamin D. Now I've said this early, early on. There was a set of things you could do to prepare your body to be as healthy as it was. You're going what from a winter? You haven't seen any sun. They claim that's where you get the most of your sun. I do supplements for this anyway. And to tell folks, I don't even know about this this flu uh, this year. Okay, I've been very fortunate. I mean, really, for most everything. Don't know really what the answer is. It's just a regime I put up and to do, and I do it. You know, going to sunshine time, you better start supplementing. You need quite a bit more, a whole lot more than the government sa uh, says. And this story says it's not really, well, this doctor says it's a big deal when you get to read it, uh, listen to the video. But, but it's one in five. That's a big deal. I don't get it. But they find out that the low vitamin D is associated with the deaths. And so it's, again, this is where we got the, what the hydrochloroquine with vitamin D or zinc together was being helpful probably because of the, the vitamin D, what it does in the body. And a lot more than what the government's telling you. And so here, here we have, if you, again, get your nutrition up, get a complement supporting the vitamin D. It's not just vitamin D. You really have to look into this on how this all works together. You'll also increase your zinc. Uh, at any rate, it looks like not this new wonder drug that only saves one in five or one in three from imposed death. It seems like vitamin D raising your levels. And they do this, 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 test, this, excuse me, the study came out of Indonesia where they don't have the problem of the cooked books that shows essentially when your body is healthy, it can fight this stuff off. It's made to. What's interesting, listen carefully what vitamin D does. It, it, it actually tones down your body's response to an invader. So it, your body actually works opposite than what I think a lot of people conceive what happens when the body attacks or something. The reason why we have the problem with this, so whatever is causing this respiratory problem, is because your body overreacts. Now I don't know how this so-called evolution uh, was uh, worked to do that to you, but having proper nutrition mitigates, modulates that response, and so that's how this is all working. If you think a little different, you'll be able to look in the world for what you need. So for me. I didn't understand how this wonder drug, this wonder treatment was anything relative to what I've already told you. Why don't you just get your nutrition up, make sure it's up, learn how to do that, and fo focus on all that. And that way for you, it doesn't really matter, does it, about the mask. So we got another step back away from any, any mask or anything. Again, doesn't mean you can't go out and get some pathogen infectious agent. But apparently, vitamin D killed all antibody reactions if you will stop them okay so it's keeping you from keep from from responding in such a way that you trigger that whatever the point is of invasion and this is the other point the study doesn't say again if there's no test they don't know what the not that vitamin d was stopping just that there's a correlation between low d and the deaths of people that were deemed to have covid or antibody responses Okay, so this this vitamin D thing, it's not, again, go read how you build a complete nutritional base for the vitamin D. It's 
it's a couple of more things. Again, it's kind of it's a balanced approach. It's not just this pop and pills thing. It really looks different when you look at nature. Not this one vial of thing that only does one out of five. I don't want to be in that group. Stay away from that group. You don't have to worry about that wonder wonder harm. And now we can do go on with life. So, COVID nineteen, the common cold, flu like symptoms was associated with a low vitamin D. Pretty simple. The flu symptoms can come by many different uh, infectious invasions or insults to your body. Then we get the truth, as I've been telling you, about what's going on. And have, again, I really, I keep thinking back, I've been really on target this entire now six months. Coming into the end of December, into the first of the year, Operation Hindsight 2020, I've been really on on the point of it. There's, and I, I guess that's what drives some of my frustration to not see people responding, maybe up until now, and even so, not very many. But we get in the notice, the more of the out, outward effects of what the truth is. They're not after what they tell you. They're after something else. And if you understand who these group of people are, you can be attacking what they're after really quickly. And you're not you're not baffled by their by their brilliance, whatever. COVID-19 is a fire drill for climate crisis, and BLM is inseparable from the struggle for sustainability, UN official claims. Well, whatever the claim, I believe that's in fact what we've been up against, and that's what I've been talking to you about. I've told you what Greta didn't get done, COVID-19 is, and you are have every opportunity, each one of you was standing to go stop this. Not to agree that the orders of their uh, the, the governors, the, the dictator tyrants are over your lives, to say that they didn't have a right to even invoke the power and show how. Not because your opinion, because the government itself knows the fact. In fact, this wishy-washiness between masks shows you something as well. And I need to get to the court case here that, that came out relative to this to show you exactly what, that, what this whole condition uh, can be pointed out to. The wishy-washiness, the ineffectiveness of this thing is a cause to stop it. And this is right back to the practical or practicability standard I've been telling you about an agency side for years and years and years. COVID is a fire bill for climate change. I said, this is what it was. Why? Because this is the method of the people that have been oppressing you. One of the groups in the multiple layer of oppression upon you, one of the groups, the sustainability crowd, the green religious fervor and adherence that are bringing this upon you, what they didn't get done with, with Greta, they did with COVID, and you said nothing. And you have every power under COVID to do so. And until someone does it that way, uh, I don't know what, what more to say. We're, we're, the clock is ticking. The global response to the fallout to the coronavirus pandemic serves as a dress rehearsal for a worldwide climate catastrophe the head of the United UN's Sustainable Business Agency has warned. Sustainable business. That's austerity. That's sustainable debt to you all, as they declared in Agenda 2030. Still to come yet, if you, if you haven't paid attention. It's still coming. they got it all set up on you now. But it's a dress rehearsal. For what? Another fraud. Climate change. Global warming. Anyway, won't read any more. The information's here. Are you going to continue to sit and watch as this thing, the plan that they have put up against you, rolls out in their favor? Or are you going to finally engage? Even if you don't agree with me, are you going to engage? If you agree that there's a different way? Certainly it's self-evident non-engagement's not the answer. And so, again, I don't really want to hear how you're just going to sit and watch. It's just not going to happen. And we are feeling the effects already, as I was telling you about your food and the cost and all that. It's availability, the ability for you to buy food. It's all being hit. Everything's being hit that I told you would be hit. But remember that what I was telling you was coming down the pike was from 2012. Remember the Modernization Acts. This is not going away. And so, based in this sustainability thing, remember I mentioned 2013, our lawsuit injunction, matter of law, the Bar Association was sued because of their, they're the part of the promoters. It was also supposed to, going to be a judge. Judge comes in and says, while I don't have jurisdiction, I'm still going to interfere, I'm still going to interfere with this, which is major problems, right? But this is our, 
This is the justice you don't have that you need to get the record of, so it's not just your opinion. But sustainability in our lawsuit then was focused on what, as I've told you, leverage funding. That's what our case really starts on, is follow the money, and the final legislation came out of the state that actually funded the thing, and that's tied to where? The EPA, the same people that will explain to you if you put on a mask, the air is not so good. The OSHA says that's not good for workers. And if you go in a, if you want to find an alternative view, if you go to piloting at 12,500 feet, you start to lose the amount of oxygen you need to function properly. Is less than in your mask that you put on that they want you to wear. Because you're just some cancer out there because the green religion says you are so, you humans. Human rights, it's all you get, what we need for you to do. So sustainable business. What is that? You've been talking about it. The climate catastrophe. Which one? The one that they're putting on you? Because they said they sprayed, the, they had those experiments they said, and they were doing chemtrails, spraying all the air to put a haze in the air, and now all of a sudden we find out our weather's adjusting, getting cooler. I don't know about you folks who have been looking for this. I don't see the bees that I saw before, and I'm not talking colony collapse. This is just something else. Why? Because it was tied to pollen loading that didn't happen, seeds that are not being produced this year, all the way since March. They've got trees that are normally loaded with seed, are not, barely ever. The trees that had seed on them that fell off didn't meet the standard because we have a different type of, of environment. And I'm watching across the, the world, we're all having the same new problems. So, it's not going any warmer, and I'm not going to even get in the, into that. There's a dynamic, a natural dynamic. Remember, these people don't believe in the sun either. And they're going to get lost in all this. Sustainability, leverage funding, we went in through that. We enjoined it through the EPA to the federal government, which is the pillar of the sustainability crowd, the bar association of which, in their documents, have reported here years and years ago, promote this. The funds of which are put in through hidden ways that look normal, but they actually come eventually to go after your property taxes as well. And in some of your times, your income tax. Or maybe even a lottery comes after all that, add another plunder. Here we have another, remember I told you that 2020 would be looking back and seeing the same thing going on, uh, that it's unchecked. Now we see trillions of stimulus go unchecked with what dogs kept toothless. The United States has spent more than three, half of three, three trillion uh, in dollars in economic rescue funds passed by Congress. I mentioned early, early on, this was the whole, what, what this was all about. This was like a big money laundering scheme. Point is that this article is that there's money flying all over the place and there's no real oversight. And so this offers, again, where there's an incentive in dollars so-called, they're, they're being used, whether they're fiat or not, they're being used, they're being taken advantage. And when these governors said that they're the dictators of, your, of the state you live in and over your life and shove you in a hole, they get to t declare where the money's going to go. And it's not really traceable, and the watchdogs are toothless, they say here. Well, that's not different than what reminded me, remember, and I'm using an article that says it was debunked, that remember when Rumsfeld said that $2.3 was missing from the Pentagon, when in fact it was actually, it was not actually able to be tracked. And that's a lot of, that's a, that's a different condition. However, ultimately, when they got the system done, remember, 9-11 and then we got $2.3 doesn't sound different than right now money uh, 1.5 trillion can, is held unaccountable. In the Pentagon money, it apparently was about 900 billion that actually still is not accounted for. Now, if you're in a system where you know you won't have to account for the money, or you can make a big dust up about where to account for it, and you know that, don't you think you can plan how to cook the books to use the money in places that you'll never really be able to have to bring it out? even as this article debunks that the money was missing. What it was was that it wasn't trackable under the systems, and then they pled that they didn't have a system that, that could keep track of it. And then ultimately by the article, I'm just going by the article, it says uh, everything but $900 billion. Well, I don't know about you, but we're pretty close to a trillion right there that's still untrackable. 
It occurred to me, notwithstanding this so-called debunkness of the loss and the toothlessness of tracking where the money went, if you know from the inside you're not going to have any money trackable, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. And this is what we're seeing replicated today in that story. Trillions of stimulus going unchecked with watchdogs kept toothless. The counties are all looking for their stimulus money from this when they declared COVID. And you, I've told you, when they started declaring all these things, uh, I said the, the states are leading the money coming. And sure enough, you heard it. Okay, so this is, to me, it's a, we're seeing the same problem. COVID is 9-11. Only on steroids and, as I told you early on, coming into the first of the year. I want you to see that it's written down that you can see the replay. And I'm saying this is the time, I told you this a long time ago, when they went to public health imperative, medical emergencies, and in this case you see the military involved, you had the, you were the most affected, but you had the most power because it limited what you could do down to one answer, which I've been pointing out week after week after week. And then trying to field the problems like people that come up with good information that's really not on point of what that remedy is supposed to do to out the condition for the fraud, the global fraud that this thing is. To do what? Readjust the finances, the financial control over everyone's life. Again, I just, my mind keeps going back, keeps going back. What I've been saying for the last six months, and I don't see people respond. I see people saying, oh, this is what's going on. This is what's happening. Oh, look at this. So they come up with brand new stuff like they think it's happening brand new. And it's not. It's just re regurgitating all the stuff they've not been talking about, been responding to. And here's another evidence about the pre-planning how this would be pre-planned. I said, if you know inside the system that some of this money is not findable and you can make it so it's not findable, you have direct communication with that money to move it around where you want and it'll never be found. 9-11-01 simulation of plane crashing into NRO buildings from the Black Vault. The exercise broke down into multiple phases, which began on September 5th. 2001. Each phase was a determine the preparedness of an NRO to various emergencies. The first phase included an NRO employee going into the workplace with a handgun and shooting a supervisor and another co-worker before dropping a gun and leaving the building. Simulation personnel along the local police officers overlooked how the NRO structure resolved, responded to the scenario. They looked for response times and security officers, how fast a cordon off an area could be established, and how they focused on the m multiple other key details to help the NRO become a more secure workplace. Each step of the process was carefully timed out from the time the gunman shot his supervisor to the time he exited the building, but the next phase of the exercise, which spanned nine days total, began on September 11, 2001, and it has nothing short of eerie. This phase of simulation, which began on the morning of September 11, 2001, simulated an aircraft plowing into, into two of their buildings at NRO headquarters, the simulation had the complete story of the pilots right down to drinking a, quote, free cup of coffee, close quote, before they boarded their flight. But as this is hypothetical tale goes, their flights didn't end so well. Although it wasn't a story of terrorism, but rather bad luck, it invokes many questions as to why months earlier the NRO was beginning to plan a summary of a plan, plane flying into their buildings to test their response. I'm going to end there. Very interesting. Listen to the detail of the plan. Do you think someone who would plan down to a free cup of coffee held by a pilot can also plan where the money's going to go when he knows that $900 billion is not ultimately trackable in a system? How about the trillions that have gone off into the states? And there's no requirement to track, and there's actually probably a prohibition why the, why the, the, uh, Watchdogs, so called, are toothless. No, where did it? I'm just going to remind you a couple of things. Where did the, the NRO headquarters get their idea to do this, the government headquarters to do this? Well, remember back in 1987, there was a court case that showed that those planes that were planned, the FBI had brought evidence that they knew that planes were going to be fl flown into the big buildings that they ultimately did run them into. Where do you think they got the idea? Probably from the evidence of that court case. And they said, we better think about this. Or was it more, we need to plan for this, 
And this is the questions that come out. I don't necessarily agree with the questions that are most important on this article. The point is, I'm talking about people who understand the system very, very well, that are in positions to plan, have the resources to plan. And if they can plan down to the cup of coffee, do you think they can plan down to the penny when it's about money? And where to use that money to do what? Whatever they can get away with doing with that kind of money. For your consideration. Then we hear these stories as we move in through my constant theme of military, military running the place. that The spaghetti western you think is a nice country. Uh, all the folks that uh, supposedly took a, well, they took an oath, but they supposedly think that we're, they have, a, have to be on the guard for the enemy in the gate. Didn't realize they were taking the oath to the enemy in the gate. Again, I don't talk too much of my opinion in all this. I've talked about all of this. What I'm talking about now, interestingly, with anti-slavery, goes back to the other fraud about anti-slavery in Lincoln in the Civil War. Wow, that's a hindsight, isn't it? At any rate, go ahead. Pentagon sur surplus handouts stoke the militarization of the United uh, U.S. police. Uh, U.S. police, that's federal, folks, the U.S. police. There's no such thing as actually U.S. police. But see, this is the titles that we read. Okay, so Pentagon surplus handouts stoke the militarization. Someone else sees it. It's not stoking the militarization. It's actually supporting the military. It just looks like a cop in the street. Police are not peace. When U.S. police flooded the streets around the country to confront protests, who are the U.S. police? So people see what they're talking about. They don't realize that they want to agree that it's actually been militarized and we're under one jurisdiction. And so people who took an oath to this don't realize that they've been in a subverted condition. And no one recognizes the warm and fuzzies that they throw, they throw around this condition to be able to realize they've been took. And so they don't respond. But it didn't say U.S. peace officers there either, does it? When U.S. police flooded the streets around the country to confront protesters two weeks ago, for many it appeared to, like the Army had deployed the camouflage uniforms and combat gear, heavily armored anti-mine vehicles, and high-powered assault. Folks, what can I say? Can you say it with me, folks? You've all been here, those of you that have been with me long enough. Can you say it with me? Lieber Code, Article 1. You knows them when you sees them. Did you all yell, scream, and yell at your monitor? Nah, I don't think you did. I hope you, some of you did. You knows them when you sees them, folks. The second paragraph. That's not by accident. For years, the U.S. De Defense Department has been handling its surplus equipment over to free to police departments. Not peace officer departments, but police. Anyway, stop here. Someone else sees it. Uh, not really new news, except someone else sees it. it. Acknowledging that we are in a military condition. And you, ha I say take cognizance of that. doesn't mean you argue with it. You just realize what uh, what's at stake. And those of you that take a, an oath to uphold the, the republic as you keep it from domestic and foreign enemies... You can't attack this one. So you better figure out how you're going to go after this enemy in the gates a different way. I think, I, until I get a different statement from anybody, I think I've been offering at least the starting point. How a bunch of you brilliant guys get together and gals get together and, and you're in energy like Peggy Hall pulling out all this background information in the alternative. You all get together doing that. And then you're going to believe you guys know what you're doing. Guys and gals, I guess I should say. Guys can't be generic anymore. Police surplus handout stoked uh, militarization of U.S. police. Not, not peace officers in the state. Federalized military. Status and development of U.S. military biological projects from st South Front. Very interesting. I'm bringing this up because of the global reach of the United States military under all kinds of covers that they want to do. The United States military and political leadership, MPL, has consistently declared the international forums the punctual implementation of the convention of the pro prohibition of the development, production, and stockpiling of bacteriological, biological, and toxic weapons and on their destruction here and after convention of the BTWC. The convention was approved by the UN General Assembly, the UN General Assembly in 1971, entered into force in 1975, as in open-ended. According to foreign and Russian biologists, a disadvantage of the BTWC is the lack of control and inspection mechanisms for the implementation of its main provisions by the participating countries. At the same time, the USMPL 
is avoiding the participation in the development of the mechanisms and signing the relevant protocols proposed by Russia. In addition, the American leadership, though it's extensive through its extensive biological military activities, extensive biological military activities, has deliberately committed serious violations of the convention, which should be considered as a departure from international law. Okay. This also references that biological lab in the Ukraine that I told you about. Someone jumped in when I did. I dropped off something from this this biological weapons lab, dropped some links. He dropped in a whole bunch more information. This lab is now in this story relative to this problem. And doesn't the first paragraph sound just like the first, the two articles before, where there's, or three articles before, where there's no inspection, no insight. The United States government is resistant to be able to keep track or be held accountable to anything. Aren't we seeing a departure from international law, generally? Then I told you that international law is essentially just customs and traditions, because you really can't stomp on sovereignty much. Now I guess I'm just saying all that is we got the same model right here the military does globally. You don't think they're going to do it inside your own land? Don't be so deluded to disregard this. And then the same weapons laboratory, and I guess there's a reason to go after Russia. I guess the Russians are bad people. I guess every country is, isn't it? It all wants to go and do something on its own terms for its own sake. So do we use that to confound our thoughts about who's good and who's bad and forget that we're being harmed at home? And maybe that's what we need to focus on first? I really could care less out there when I start thinking about it about all the things that are going out there. Folks out there, take care of your own spot, please. I can't I can't be thinking about yours, and I don't want to. I don't want to be a trespasser on your way of life either. The way you believe you need to live is not what my decision anyway. But what's the United States military thinking about doing all this stuff? Why is that even a question? Again, there's the point about the, the uh, impropriety. Okay, You can't even have the appearance of an impropriety when we have a problem. So, so we're so far out of international norms, it's not even funny. But it's the same method of not being able to track and trace or be held accountable. And no evidence for it. This is just a, the attorney's answer for everything. Deny, deny, deny. Now, move into, despite all that, and moving into what maybe can be said within the, con the confines of this uh, oppression that we're under, I think I got this from from uh, Gary L. Another judge rules that Ohio's through Twitter. Uh, another judge rules that Ohio's COVID nineteen lockdown is illegal. And so here we have evidence that there is something to say. I said you're really on the right side of history, even in the alternative, as I was pointing out. Peggy Hall stuff would be perfect in that regard where you agree that the orders are correct, that the governor tyrants are fine in their tyrancy, and you agree that the orders and the stipulation, you stipulate to those orders, we see that that is a viable condition by this Ohio court case where a judge, and I haven't heard any appeal yet, so I don't know about any more than this. This came weeks a, a week ago or so. Ohio's COVID-19 lockdown violates due process and the separation of powers, and state judge a state judge concluded today ruling in favor of a company that sought to reopen a water park without suffering criminal penalties. Quote, the unbridled and unfettered consolidation of authority is one is in one unelected official is dangerous grounds to tread on, writes Erie County Court of Common Pleas Judge Judge Roger Bennett, Bennett, Bennett. Uh, referring to the o Ohio Department of Health Director Amy Action's order requiring a non-essential businesses to close, if one, quote, and if one unelected accountable, unaccountable to the public official is allowed to invoke uttered unfettered orders that criminalize an un un otherwise non-criminal activity only for disobeyance of her orders, then the right to due process is extinguished. That statement is exactly what I've been telling you, but notice that statement is subject to the order. So that I want to address in a, in a, and I'll just refer to three points within the court case decision, which I'll have a link for you. That's not the due process that we needed. Quote in the court case saying the plaintiff Kalahari, which is a company, it's a, a water park company, 
has an approved safety plan for reopening. So I want you to take this decision, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to go through the list. It's a little hard to find of the document itself. You'll get a link to the discussion. I'll just go off my Twitter where I read the points, and there's a lot more points. The plaintiff Kalahari has approved has an approved safety plan, agrees the tyrant governor's orders are valid, that they do have a test for a virus, but more importantly that the name COVID-19, like Black Lives Matter, is enough for the fraud to continue. This is not the due process that we need. This is the process in the alternative where you concede or they prove, because in a habeas they have the obligation to prove, that there is an infectious agent. So this, but while I want to point out, while this, I was anticipating with the high, high anticipation when I read, I was on Sunday, until I read it, I was hoping that this was the due process we wanted. Where you have an answer that says that a company or anyone agree, has an approved safety plan, that's not due process, where that was denied. The due process violation is where they didn't certify up front to a, a certifiable infectious agent in the record. That's the due process failure we have to focus on. So this judge being correct, where the party agrees to follow, to he agrees with the tyrant's order, then he agrees to follow it. Within that constraint, as I've been telling you before, the courts will side with the compliance. That's not the, the position we need to take first. So that response is 100% accurate and correct. It's not 100% applicable to what you need to do to get yourself out of the corona uh, prisons, each one of you. And now, they also said something else that I felt very important in this court case. And the quote is, there is no sound evidence that defendant Acton's orders stops the spread of the virus. In other words, when they take a measure... And they cannot produce, and see here, the burden is on the, on the government, even in this injunction. It wasn't a habeas. This is an injunction. And this is an interesting case to read for those of you that want to see what an injunction is and the deference given to the judge to determine things. Why you can't bring a question to the judge and why you have to bring the law that they're confined to. But that in an, inju an injunction, an equity, action, action in equity, the judge has the power. He tells you this right up front. And you'll see how he describes all this. And so you understand how a court would be dealing with it. But he says that there is no sound evidence that the defendant actor's order stops the spread of the virus. The burden was on the government here to show that what they ordered you to do was effective. And he says that makes a failure of due process when it didn't. Here's my thought and application now. As the government and everybody, everybody's predicting the second wave, although I did see uh, Fauci, as I see here, people say fraud chi. That, that does not mean fall prey to, though. Fauci means fall prey to. He's now backing off a bit. I think it might be because they anticipate what's going on here. But the second wave predicts. The second wave predicts and validates this statement that their masks, their social distancing, all the measures they're taking, all the lunacy you see happening, whatever I maybe even maybe heard something about, what would we hear, a Grimner on this freakers ball people in 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 bubbles anyway you see bubbles on people's heads and everything else anyway, all of that where they're predicting a second wave invalidates everything they've done up until now as valid to address the emergency this statement here is probably one of the biggest to identify really quickly there is no sound evidence the defendant actions order stops the spread of the virus their duty for those of you looking at duties and powers their duty was to investigate and spot stop the spread. Where they're predicting there's not going to be a cessation of the spread, everything they're doing now is invalid. And it can be all enjoined for that reason, if you agree the tyrant's governor's orders are valid. Otherwise, this argument that I'm talking about now is in the alternative to the, base, the facial challenge that they had no test. They didn't do the certification for an infectious agent. They couldn't do that, and that's why you don't find one, and therefore their valid, their emergency is fraud. And where they've hurt people and harmed them in their property and rights, that constitutes takings, that also constitutes felonies. Whether they want to rise up to sedition and treason, it's up to you to go search out through. 
Now, for those of you that are listening want to know what the form, the words are, I just gave you the words. Expand it just a little bit. I'm trying to get through the point here. So the second wave prediction by the government is a declara- is a, 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 a equates to the declaration that what they told you to do was ineffectual, and it was never to be in place that way. That's what this court case kind of gives you if you look for it right there in it. I don't remember now where. I'm not reading from the uh, from the court case. Uh, another quote I want to touch here of a couple more actually, but it says the judge says impermissible classification of identity rather than on safety brought this official order into into uh, error into invalidity. In other words, there or the looking at their duties underneath the code, or the statutory code for the public health official, they were to do something. They're to provide safety. Now, what their arguments ended up doing was classified businesses instead of focusing on the safety that what they were doing relative to the emergency. This is an important status. Mis- Remember, I told you about misclassifying you, changing the status. In this case, they had no authority to even focus on it. So I, this was a very interesting insight to gather in your mind how to look again at what they're doing to qualify whether or not you have a position to place and say we this status was mischaracterized and not under the authority delegated to the uh, to the the power delegated to the authority the public health authority here or even a governor and so when you look at how the judge is talking here he can instruct you and I suggest you read this art this article you can start to see again it's it's what I've been telling you but it's in a judge's words and some of it's a lot more confined than what I would probably say sometimes I'm trying to educate as well so I've got to I kind of go at it just a little bit different I write different than I talk to you about a bit it, well sometimes sometimes when I'm streaming some of this some of these ideas to you those are actually the words I'd likely use just like I say them but in discussing how to work this thing through it takes me a little bit longer so we have three principles the due process that was d- decided here was not actually the due process that we would need you and you my listeners the ones that would do a habeas that say wait a minute these orders are 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 the due process failure was in not doing the due process required to certify to an infectious agent that's the due process you want to attack secondarily in the alternative you would say that you're in compliance and or you can't attach something that's inefficacious to doing what doing the the delegated authority you've been given through the statute which is black and white copy and paste what that is so that and and understand it correctly and then the third one here of a couple more that i read again twitter's so small i gotta do this and i gotta hit this stuff and run i don't don't have a ton of time sometimes but the imper- impermissible classification of identity relative to an occupation or something was not within the power to even look at. And so that now becomes with the overarching problem of one unelected official doing things without remedy for due process. There was no remedy in all this either relative to the orders or the power issued. You now have a separation of powers problem, which they, they talked about before, where this order the laws of administration were to become as law, and that now became legislative, where there was actually criminal penalties, and the legislature was never involved. And that's why you've seen some, when they're challenged around the nation, they back off on those criminal penalties really fast. I think, again, they know, these governments and these attorneys know what they violated in you. And so you, you have to... When you don't say anything, like I think it was the Wisconsin case clearly stated, we're waiting for you to ensure we didn't come along and beat you unnecessarily. And so, again, I court case for those of you that want to read it, it's really not that long to read. Very important statements. He sets up what an equity case is for you. He shows you the power of the judge, why I tell you how to discuss your rights without question within it, anticipating the responses of the adversary, so to speak. In this case, it's the government on how you present a position in a paper to anticipate their evasion of their duty. If you put it down and write it, it can't be evaded. Now it's just a matter of whether or not you've interpreted it correctly. And that's something you have to set quietly with the words 
and maybe with some in, in instruction, maybe through court cases, to see if you've got it correctly sometimes, sometimes pretty clearly. Clearly stated, they're supposed to certify to an infectious agent. I don't need another interpretation. Okay, so you can write that down and go to the, go to the bank, if you will, with that one. And so I want you to see, you can have evidence on what I've been saying is here coming up. He points out this misclassification thing. That's what I was talking to you about status. They did it here. You see that, that it's something, folks. So I'm just not talking just the breeze here. There's the conditional things that need to be met by us, we the people. And when you do that, you finally get it, what I'm saying, and settle down and write those things down and start making your record and do it more. Re-educate yourself to be responsible to yourself. We get that, that muscle, if you will, becomes able to do the work faster as well. As a mass of people, we start to make the record that needs to be making that they've been burying for decades, which is another problem that the numbers, calling on the numbers. So I was given an, e um, an email and a link in the chat of a video. I think Cowboy Tech was the source of this. It's uh, in Idaho. They're actually maybe moving forward on this. So those of you that can get to Idaho may want to go do and support this. Although the support I would offer that you ought to do is what I've been saying needs to be handed to someone who's going to support this condition in Idaho, where the legislature is going to make a, by the constitutional, as I understand it, and this is through Ammon Bundy, who I have my own problems with and long term, and Vinny, Vinny knows about these. So but it is a notice from him about what's going on in Idaho that the legislators up there uh, are saying they need some support. My opinion is they don't. If you were to, any one of you were to put together a quick package, run it up to a bunch of the legislators that are walking in to make a fight over this, this thing that they want to take away the governor's order uh, by the constitutional power in the, in the, uh, well, in the or Idaho constitution for the legislature to take, get a handle of what was supposed to be a short-term emergency that's now reached its its uh, this date, the the the, the born on the, the the life ending whatever the date the, the the statutory the constitutional statute of limitations, the, the constitutional limitations. Excuse me, uh, the Idaho legislature is restoring our republican form of government on June twenty uh, third. He speaks through this. He has definitions. I think you should listen to a lot of it. What I would ask you to do though, if you're interested, to go there. When you go there, you go there with the information on how they have no basis for the governor to make it from three, for 90 days before. And that the legislature should be looking, a, legis, a legislator in re, re, representing the people in the rep, representative republic would be looking at the fraud of COVID-19 as, as an unestablished, non-certified infectious uh, um, lack of infectious agent and so there is no discussion and art and debate on the 23rd you only have two days here to get there day and a half excuse me and so i want to pass this on i'm not a, a great fan of what i hear necessarily on the limitations he is someone that didn't didn't listen to what i said and uh, there's a bit of a um uh, I don't know what it is in me. A, dis a man didn't have to die, I guess, is the thing I, I hear about this. And I'm now seeing uh, Vine is say Vinny is saying they just won't listen. Yeah, folks just don't listen. And and so that's, I guess, more of my people just aren't listening. And, they, and they're great people and they got great principles, but we're doing it 100%, could be 100% wrong, and then applying it to irrelevant things. You don't have to support a legislator going in to, to get rid of the governor's to go into it, a debate where the governor has created a fraud uh, of, without record, uh, of, be, by the absence of a record of something that can't be tested for. It's a different application of the same thing I'm talking to you, but through a representative in the government. This isn't a debate. This is a situation where someone lays out the facts in the chamber while they're going on to take away that the, there was any cause. You don't work on the 90 day that 90 days has elapsed and do we go with it and go away with it. No, you just show on the record where now that a thousand of you show up, you see that the record's being made in the seat of decision that there's a fraud and then you watch as those so-called those legislators commit crimes. 
Now we've got the condition back in Virginia, where the mass of the people see the crime on the record. You come from a much more established foundation than your opinion and what I see here at M and we start to restore the Republican form. You're not restoring the Republican form if you're not attacking the validity of the judge of the governor's order where there's an absence of certification to an infectious agent that destroyed their whole their whole state, like everywhere else. And that's my criticism, I guess, of that with an encouragement. Go there and do what I'm asking or something better, if you have something better, to inform a legis all the legislature that there is no 90-day, actually. In the alternative, there is, that you have to act. But this thing was done day one when they forgot to certify to an actual emergency, the guidelines of which are in those statutes. And the problem, again, the enforcement, the administration of all this, now that's the legislative side, all right, we had the judiciary saying, hey, there's some conditions here. If you've agreed, this company that agreed to these uh, this governor's orders, they said they're compliant to them. You read in this case, that last case, to them, you get to you get to disregard. You're enjoined, the order's enjoined from you. you. The water park that didn't agree to comply after agreeing to the tyrannical order, no, you don't get to open. you got to see that dichotomy in there. Same thing here. You go in and you can call it a debate whether or not there's supposed to be a denunciation of the at the time of 90 days, or you can say that 90 days is a, in, only in the alternative because that what's up front isn't an argument. There was no certification for an infectious agent. There was a declaration, de an emergency declared on no cause is what you argue first. That's legislature. So we got judicial, we got legislature, and then we have the enforcement. We have the uh, administration. We have the executive branch. And this story pops up. One uh, In four years in one state, one hundreds of cops charged with felonies like raping kids, zero have gone to jail. A review of law enforcement licenses in the state of Texas has found that hundreds of officers were forced to surrender their licenses to avoid or limit prosecution in the past four years, most of which were felonies. Again, I'm not reading this to say, oh, look, at they get away with it. This is our problem. This is what's causing us to get where we are. This is what causes, as I, was, as I just actually mentioned, one of the states that comes up in here in this story is the same state that killed one of the guys that shouldn't have been killed in Oregon. A review of these licenses, uh, enforcement licenses in the state of Texas. Well, uh, okay, we don't find out the overwhelming majority of the cases were done with surrender. Like they get, they're no crime, right? No jail time whatsoever. This now brings up the idea I told you: their soldiers don't go to jail. They're in them. You're seeing evidence of a military operation here. It just looks like it's so-called civil. It's civilian, is what it is, not civil. And I get reading down here, reading down here in this article, and it names the top, what, four states? The study conducted by the International Association of Directors of Law Enforcement Standards and Training, if you didn't think that sustainability was a thing, if you didn't think that international view wasn't important, and that gets down to your codes as well, your international codes, International Association of Directors, where do they involve with interpreting the laws local to you in the United States of America where you're supposed to be a sovereign people represented in your needs and then everything done by due process and compensation to property theft. What are these people looking in from the international? But even so, the international directors and law enforcement standards and trainings found that Texas was surpassed by Oregon, Florida, and Georgia. Georgia had the most decertifications that year with 562 officers being forced to turn in their license many to avoid prosecution from, from crimes. Let me go back up to Oregon. I didn't understand how that they missed this. Oregon only has about 4 million people in it. Georgia, I think, has about 11 million. Do you realize the per capita crime, the unpunished crime that's going on in the pioneering police state, not peace state, police state of Oregon? So it's not quite so simple here. It's going to take a whole lot more focus on how we're going to turn the tide and what, I guess, Am and Bunny walked in and what I was trying to tell them before Finnicum got taken down, what he was up against.
And you saw how many people w got prosecuted actually for that. This happens all the time. Remember, and I, you know, I forgot about this for myself. I don't put myself in this too much. I came from a place where I was going to be shot by five cops because they fabricated a, fi a traffic stop. You want to talk about, I forgot all about this. Someone had to remind me. Talk about what, George Floyd? Talk about Grant? All these people that have been shot, all these black people? That's another video I saw, two black kids talking about, it's not just blacks. I am here today because of what happened to me in the early 90s relative to looking at oh, being from, to have and to be. I don't know how I'm here today because I was looking at the revolver of, or, you know, the revolvers of uh, cops. I guess it wasn't revolvers, they're semi-autos of cops who fabricated a traffic stop. How I'm here today, I can't tell you. Do you know, I told you this before, six months later, and you know I can't find this story anywhere on the internet now, a guy named Lee Cole came out of California, had, his, had a meds problem, pulls off the highway to go to the Oregon State Police, pulls into their Central Point facility, and by five, sundown that night, he's shot 23 times in the back. While he's trying to get away from his pickup, he finally decides he's going to get out of there. Oregon State Police, the same people that murdered Finnecum, shot this guy back in 1994 or so. So about this Black Lives Matter nonsense, I forgot. This is where I come from. Not black. It's that these police are killers. And I said then, where did America go? Talk about how blind I've been, up at least until then. So when people talk about it, I just, it's water under the bridge for me. I don't even recognize it. Again, I had to be reminded, you come from that. I just survived, I told you folks. I've told you this before. Lee Cole never did. He's done. He was done a long time ago. That's when the change happened. That's when they started killing people. It didn't matter that you had a color. We were all, I don't even know. I mean, I don't, do I have a color? I'm Sienna. I think we were both Sienna folks. See, it doesn't matter. He was executed. 19 and 94 or so. I can't remember now. Something I've just, it's not forgotten. It's just that I don't put it up on my shoulder and wear it on my sleeve anymore. It's the problem that we're up against, all of us. Anyway, I guess I'm starting to get irritated just because of that. Folks don't really understand when this started, what they were supposed to do, how it's on them. I told you how I could predict how this was coming down. It's already been in us. Now, we see now the story today that the Pioneer Police State, where Finnicum got killed, where Lee Cole got killed, and any number of people got killed, were not black either. And were doing nothing that I can tell that was wrong. In fact, in my case, that I survived, I found, I gave the, uh, that's where I learned how to do court paper filings. I gave that cop a run for a year, made his life miserable. It took a lot of time for me to do that. They did not want to mess with me after that. But that's what started me, is that I could have been Floyd. I just escaped. Only I wouldn't have had a boot on my neck. I'd have had a bunch of rounds in my chest. So, to this day, I do not know how I escaped, because I thought it was done. At any rate, what it was, I'll tell you, without, and I don't want you all to do this. I did have a little bit in me. It was what I was saying to the cop to counter his stupidity, and I caught, I caught him in a quick response. I caught him being explaining to him how impossible what he was doing. Like I tell you, the, they tell you to stand up, sit down, put your hands up, put your hands down. I shut him all down on that, and I caught his attention, and that de destabilized that whole dynamic. And I had just a moment to then ask another question. Tell me one thing to do at a time. And somehow that diffused it, and I was able to get back to my car and do what we should have done normally without all the nonsense. But while I'm doing gymnastics, trying to keep up, I've got cops showing up all over the place pointing guns at me. It was not looking good. And yelling, and you know how it all works, those of you that have been involved. So I come from this so-called Black Lives Matter. I come from this police brutality. It's where I saw America went down the tubes back in the 90s. For those of you that think I'm just some short-term 
thing or don't understand what I'm seeing or my experience has nothing to say or I don't have an insight that to actually offer to people or that you can do nothing about this. Because look how many years later and it's gotten worse and it's not because it's just going to get worse. It's because nobody wants to address it or very few. Or when you do, you do it like the Bundys or you do it like anybody else. Any rate. Cops who shot homeless man 22 times while he lay on the ground are not protected by qualified immunity. Appeals court rules. So here's your first insight that what they've been doing is a crime. They finally got caught. This is maybe the time, I'm telling you, 2020. This is the time we get to flip it on over and do everything that I was telling you to re to correct the problems that have been built into the system, created by the Bar Association, no less, and their so-called judges as they say they're independent independent of their own organization, I doubt it. But cops who shot a homeless man 22 times while he lay on the ground are not protected by qualified immunity. Had that happened to me, folks, I'd be dead, wouldn't I? Who cares then? Do I get remedy? No, none of you get remedy when this happens to you, and yet it's not qualified immunity. The very thing I told you you have to make and define locally is not proper and not available. Why? You know them when you see them. Up until then, the, it has been okay for the military soldier to shoot you even while you lay on the ground and shoot you until you're full of your Swiss cheese or better. And finally, the pressure is coming to call this out. You could have stopped this before. But now you have, if you needed an excuse of, of what was right to say, now you can see where a qualified immunity may not actually be as far as they've been, you've been allowed to let it go or they've allowed themselves to go. Then the cops come out, interestingly, in the same time, you won't need to abolish us. We won't be around for it. While many police officers like me are quitting the force, the nasty words we, the police, get called all the time have now turned into rocks, bottles, and gunfire. It's over. America, we are leaving. I say good riddance. From my standpoint, good riddance. Good start. I put that in the Twitter. No one responded. I don't know who, the, how, who you people are to follow me. At any rate, this is the core. Let them go. Good idea. You're about to get caught if the people figured it out. There is no qualified immunity for some of this. Maybe you shouldn't have allowed when you became police and went from peace. Maybe you asked this on yourself. I have no sympathy right now. None. In fact, because of all the government has stolen from me and nearly my life, I've become to the point pretty self-reliant. If I die, I die with someone's hands. It's not going to be necessarily at the cops' hands, though, and I'm not going to rely on what they have to say. In fact, more and more people I'm around, when something happens, we just we just get ready. We had a problem when there was no sheriffs. But we said, good. And when there was a question in the neighborhood, we had ten people around ready to go when we had a theft going on around the property. Perfect. We didn't need the cops. So good riddance. Cops, have, when government was destroyed in, in history, you go look around, like Massachusetts, I think is one story. Six months, they destroyed the government for six months. Nothing happened. People were good. People did what they did normally. You didn't have this sort of problem, made up stories. But good, good riddance to the cops who have allowed the cops to become police instead of peace officers. Police chief forced to resign after supporting citizens who armed up amid riots tells you the condition. A police chief who said you have the right to arm up to protect yourself is has to resign. He's forced to resign by the system is where you go in. That's the anomaly you need to shut down those that put the force on him to, the, the, to resign. You can't enforce the law, and when you do, you get taken out means your country has been taken down. That government has been taken over. Thank you, Grimmer, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. Uh, what you do to keep us going and again my dog Rex thank you for the donation and anybody else that donates and uh, normalization of ignorance and the listeners and sound minds and jewels at ucy.tv thank you very much for all the syndication that's going on and getting the word out I just hope lots of people would just start stepping up on the principles I'm allowing I'm offering and, and that you can see the, gu the provisions in the law allow that can't be denied to you I'll be with you next week tech diffs or nature willing Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
Well, that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. <laughs>